Previously on The Bill. She fell in love with a murderer, a child killer. So I got a daughter. I found out from a journalist. Is it true, Sam? Mum, what's going on? Glen Weston. Yes. Is he my dad? Are you my dad? That's what I'm here to find out. No, not like this. This is wrong. If you're Glen Weston, then you are. She told me. Inside now. No! It's a setup. They're after a photo. It was no setup. I didn't know that journalist was coming. I won't have it, Glen. I won't be part of your circus. I didn't know that he was coming. He's not with me. Really? Well, he's here because you're here, and you know it. Richard's outside. I see. Put Abigail in my office. Mom! Just please go. Ah, oh, no, we go this way. Hey. So you want your photo in the paper, do you? Dear Nixon. Dear Nixon. If anyone asks, I'm busy. This way. It's true, isn't it? She is my daughter. How could you do this? You of all people, how could you collaborate with the press? I didn't. That man contacted me. He said I had a child. Now find out I do. Oh, so you came back for his photo opportunity, did you? No, I came to see you. He must have followed me. Oh, I'll bet he did. Because all he wants is a story. The copper and the child murderer. I don't care what he wants. You lied to me, Samantha. You said you'd had an abortion. I lied to you. Do you think you could keep it a secret? Has she ever asked who her dad is? Or did you lie about that too? What did you tell her? Did you say I'd run out on you? Yeah, that'd be your style, wouldn't it? Twist it right around. Just sit there. And stay put. I've got to get rid of that reporter. I've got a right to see her. Oh, no, you don't. Don't try and get in my way. Or what? I'd do it without you. Don't threaten me, Glenn. You're the one on life licence. What if I say you're harassing us? What are the parole board going to do? Oh, very nice. Out with a big stick. You don't like it? Then back off. This is my work, Glenn. You can't do this here. What happened? Someone run me over. Did you see who it was? Don't move. Wait for the ambulance. Did you see who it was, mate? No. Can we get some details? Like what? Leave it, Desi. Maybe it can cost. Like what's your name? Greg. Greg what? Greg Wallace. What day is it, Greg? I don't know. Who's the Prime Minister? I don't know. How many fingers am I holding up? Hey, you nearly poked me eye out then. Sorry. It's all right, I'll get over it. Look, you better leave it. He hit his head. He doesn't know which way is up. Just relax. Lie still. <sighs> Does Dior Nixon know what this is about? Oh, she knows what it's about, all right. Well, she's very busy. Not too busy for this, believe me. And you're Dougie Pritchard. That's right. I'll see if I can find her. Thank you. Go. I heard. Tell him I'll be 15 minutes. And when he asks again, tell him I've gone. Right, you're going. No, I'm not. Pritchard's in the front office. You can get out round the back. I'm not going anywhere until we talk. And I'm not getting into this with a journalist in the building. And Abigail upstairs. Is that her name, then? Abigail? Didn't Pritchard tell you? How much does she know about me? I said I'm not getting into it. You've got to deal with me, Samantha. It's not in your control. I'll see you tomorrow. I can't do it now. I want to see her. Well, you can't. Not just out of the blue. I mean, that's what I want, so that's what I want to discuss. I will talk to you, Glenn. That's all I can promise. Did you know that was my dad? Yeah. Did you know that he was Ian McCarthy and that he killed a child? Yes. I was there when that journalist confronted your mum the first time. So, when I told you that I came from a one-night stand and that's what my mum had told me, you knew it was a lie. And I spoke to your mum about that and I said that you should know the truth. And in the end, that is what she told you. Only because she had to. Either way, she told you and now you know. Yeah? Look, she's doing the best she can. Best for who? For you. If she was doing the best thing for me, she would have done it totally, totally not like this. What happened with my dad? That was a mistake, yeah? 
My mum doesn't make mistakes. That's what she thinks. Abigail. Abigail. Your mum had her reasons for handling things the way she did. Handling? She lied to me! And all to cover up the fact that she could make a mistake that big! That's not fair. Yeah, you're right, it's not fair. And I should know because I'm the mistake. We're not cutting into your busy social schedule, are we, Brendan? I just told the child mind I'd be home on the dot. Well, that was silly, yeah? I don't even know what we're doing here. Investigating the security van robbery. Well, there's nothing to connect Sid Wright to that robbery. Well, that's where you're wrong, Einstein. I went back to the security firm and guess who's on the payroll? This guy? Uh-huh. And he's married to a villain's daughter. That makes him a pretty good candidate for the inside man in my book. We should have authorization for a surveillance. Yeah, well, this isn't a surveillance. This is research to establish whether a surveillance would be fruitful. Research for a surveillance. That sounds like you all over. You're feeling spiky, aren't you? I just don't see the point. This is so... So what? Speculative. You have to speculate to accumulate. I don't see much accumulating, do you? <sighs> we better get you back to your little ones. I think it's past your bedtime. What are you doing later? I'm going home to see my family. I thought you might fancy a drink, so we could discuss that little incident. Look, there's nothing to discuss. I kissed you. It was a mistake. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. What did you mean? But now that you've uh, mentioned it, I mean, maybe we should talk about that. Obviously, it's been playing on your mind. Maybe you want to get things off your chest, get things out in the open, so to speak. Can we talk to him now? How's the leg? Broke. They're gonna put it in plaster. The witness we found mentioned a blue beam. Do you know anything about it? No. You sure? Look, don't worry. If they come back, I'll deal with it. Why would they come back, Mr. Wilson? I said if. Are you sure you don't know anything? I can't help you. I didn't ask if you could help. I asked if you knew. Des. If you do see them again, Mr. Wallace, get in touch with the station. We don't want you to deal with it yourself. In fact, we'd take a very dim view if you did. Do you understand? Yeah. Thanks for taking the time. Now, either he doesn't like the police, or he's not telling us all that he knows. Which one's your money on? Both. Right. You only have to go about a mile or so, but the important thing is to avoid being followed. So you need to keep your head down and stay out of sight. What time tomorrow? Uh, afternoon, and no reporters. Uh, Gov. Not now, Phil. No, we got the... Um... I said not now. What time in the afternoon? Um, about four. All right. Thank you, Tony. You uh, don't mind me asking. Why are the reporters chasing you? They're like policemen. They chase other people instead of sorting themselves out. Gov, we've had a break for on the robbery. What? You know the bloke who showed up at the house of the security guard that we interviewed? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, Sid Wright. Yeah, well, he works security as well. Where? The same firm. He works in the Met Police Warehouse, no less. Sees vehicles. So? Well, so he's got connections both sides of the fence. He's related by marriage to some local faces. Oh, what faces, Phil? Archie Foster. He's married to Foster's daughter. So this security guard, who's now dead, knew this man from work who happened to be married to the daughter of a crook? Well, that hardly busts it open for us, Phil. Yeah, well, it's better than nothing. It's not really a breakthrough. And it's not urgent that it requires you to work overtime, and that goes for you too, Brandon. Yeah, whatever, go. Thanks, Eva. I'll see you tomorrow. What did you get rid of them for? Can't be on my account. What have you done with him? Glenn, I haven't done anything with him. He's gone. Why? I didn't want it to happen like this. I can't believe he didn't know about me. I told you, he didn't want children. Yeah, not wanting and not knowing, that's a bit different. He's not part of your life. Yeah, he is. Part of me comes from him. And he killed someone. I didn't know that when I met him. You knew when I asked you about him, when I wanted to know, you knew then. The truth was hard and I didn't think that you were ready. That is not true! Well, sometimes it's better that you just don't know. For who? I did it to protect you. Oh, more lies! I did it for you! You did it to protect yourself because you let a murderer get into your knickers. You don't know what you're talking about! Abby! Oh. 
He fooled you and you can't bear it. That's why you lied. Pretend it never happened. You don't know that. I know you're not in control anymore. Oh, yes, I am. I'm still your mother. It's my choice, not yours. You're not seeing him, Abigail. You can't stop me. For those of you who don't know, there was an armed robbery yesterday. A security van was held up on Talbot Street outside the Union Building Society. We think the robbers themselves were then ambushed on Doval Street. Des, DS Hunter would like you to watch the CCTV they've got of the ambush. And anyone else who'd like to see it with a view to identifying the suspects, feel free. What happened, Des? Pairing's the same as yesterday, except Gary. I've two whispers I want you to make the calls on. Which leaves a seat next to Tony for Gabriel Kent. He's our new probationer, everybody. Welcome to Sun Hill. This is your new family. Just the usual mix of the good, the bad and the ugly. They know the ropes, you don't, so your training starts now. Okay, that's it, everyone. Have a good day. So you're on scene this robbery, then? Des and Cameron got shot at, didn't you, wear? That's what you get for being quick. They nearly got us and all. How did they miss that, idea? Hey, you little mank. So you were in the Navy, is that right? 16 years. Sergeant Smith. I was in the Army before this. Seen any action? Yep. Falklands. How long do you take me for? <laughs> You'll find things a bit different here. Good. More autonomy, less discipline. Any advice for a novice, Sarge? Yeah. What's the likes of Tony and Dex? They know us what. You'll get the griefy jobs for a bit, but pull your weight and put up with that and you'll be fine. Is there any particular reason you left the Navy? Too many sailors in the Navy. <laughs> right, let's start the old tour then, shall we? Well, I thought we'd be out and about. Well, let's not run before we can walk, eh? Wouldn't dream of it. They call it puppy walking. Don't let that bother you. That's the one that shot at us at Early Lane. And that's the one that was with him. I can recognise them both from the kit they've gone on. Excellent. That gives us continuity of evidence. It links the robbery to the ambush. And what about the ones doing the ambushing? Whatever well, total mystery. Cheers, mate. Where are you going? I'm in court, Sarge, I told you. Is the DI in yet? No idea. Am I the only one doing something about this robbery? I think Brandon and Eva are on it. Oh, fantastic. The clock watcher and the agony arm. It's a shambles from the top down. The bike was torched here, the robbery and the ambush was back there, so I'd say they were heading that way. Yeah, you see, this is perfect for switching vehicles. The bike comes across the open ground, and even if it was being chased, the car just couldn't get through that opening. No. So, it's helmets off and into a vehicle over there. Well, top planning all in all, mm. apart from a bit about being robbed and ambushed themselves. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, let's look at a few doors. It was broad daylight, like someone must have seen something. Yeah. You know, Hunter was having a go at me yesterday for not going the extra mile. <sighs> Ignore him. It's just funny he's nowhere to be seen when this legwork needs doing. Yeah? Gov. Can I talk to you about these armed robberies? Samantha's dealing with them. Yeah, she's not in yet. What? She had some kind of uh, personal business kick off in here last night involving her daughter. How do you mean? Some fellow at the press were outside, I don't know. Only she's not here, so I thought I'd come and ask you. Well, go on, ask. I'd like to do a surveillance on Sid Wright. His name cropped up as an associate of one of the security guards I've been looking at. So what qualifies him for surveillance? Well, number one, he works for Secure Way. And number two, he's married into the Foster family. Archie Foster? Yes, Gov. So you're saying that Sid was the inside man and the raid could have been Foster's work, is that it? It's the sort of thing that family would do. The security van job or the ambush that followed? Either. I think surveillance is the best way to find out, and the sooner the better. So what does Sam think? Well, I'll put her in the picture, but that's as far as it's gone. Well, I need to talk to her. She's running it, Phil. Yeah, only she's not here, is she, Gov? Look, I want to work this one myself this time. I don't want to be shut out. Right, community safety unit that way. CID down here. This is where I want to be. Yeah, well, like I said, don't run before you can walk. Excuse me, fellas. Yeah, I got that before you wanted. Pucker. And don't look down your nose at uniform. I don't. I spent my life wearing one. I've got to pay my dues first, I know that, but when I do, I want to be in CID. Well, every man should have an ambition. Ambition? Very good on your first day. Inspector Gold, Gabriel Kent. So you got your eye on CID, have you? Yes, ma'am. I think the work's more interesting, more serious. And not so much reacting to the whims of the public. 
Or putting it another way, your work's half done for you. And you're one step removed. Not frightened of getting your hands dirty, I hope. No, Mum. Glad to hear it. This Tavana. Go real, Ken. Uh, Sergeant Smith said you two are the ones to keep an eye on. You? Keep an eye on us? It was a compliment. But awful of probation, aren't you? I'm over 18. Yeah, well, they're taking on all sorts these days, aren't they? Yeah, they must be. <laughs> Sarge, just had a report from Cad. Stolen blue BMW, just like the one last night hit and run. It's a bit of a coincidence. Do you reckon we should go and check it out? Okay. Five series. Um, Midnight Blue had an M series badge on it, even though it wasn't, and I put alloy wheels on it. Thanks. When did you notice it was missing? Uh, I was there last night at eight when I parked it up and it was gone this morning. Does anyone else have keys? Like a relative? No. Did you go out at all? No. Nope. You didn't go along to the takeaway or the offy, anything like that? What's that got to do with the price of fish? Well, you might have seen the vehicle later on. Might narrow the time down a bit. I was in from when I got home to when I got up in the morning, all right? We both were. Whole night. When's it due? Five weeks. It's tiring, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm exhausted. You're always exhausted. By that reckoning, you've been pregnant since we got married. <sighs> He's joking. I'm not. I love that car. I never get what it's worth off insurance. You'll be wanting a crime number, then? Yeah. That is why I reported it. I thought you seemed nervous. Expecting a baby and married to him, I'm not surprised. I meant to bad us. He doesn't seem worried. Maybe that's because she backed him up. Married life, it's a beautiful thing. Don't knock it till you've tried it. Listen, I'd rather slash me this than have what they've got in there. Anyway, at my age, all the best women are taken. Where's the DI? She's on her way. She's taking her foot off the pedal. Her mind's elsewhere. What are you talking about? You know full well. That bloke who was in here last night with the short hair, what was all that about? It is personal. Yeah, I know that. When I try to talk to her about work at work, she nearly bit me head off. Those fast track fingerprints came back off the robbery bike. No match. We got nothing. Oh, there might be some forensics on the other bike that was torched. No chance. When do you last get a decent forensics off a burnt vehicle? The forensics won't do it. We've got to be proactive. And how can we do that when our governor's gone AWOL? I've not gone AWOL, Philip. I'm here. Any messages? Oh, the DCR wants to see you as soon as you get in. So you should be moving on these rubberies. We need motoring, and we're not because she's not focused. Gov? Sam, uh, take a seat. So I hear you got involved in a bit of a fracas last night. It's a personal matter, Gov. Who told you? Well, if it was a personal matter, why did you bring it to the office? Was it Phil Hunter? It doesn't matter who it was, except it wasn't you. Abigail's biological father turned up yesterday and it's created a few family problems because he hasn't been around since she was born. And is he causing trouble? No, nothing I can't handle. And I'm sorry it spilled over into the station, Gov. It, it won't happen again. Good, because you've got a double robbery to investigate. Yes, Gov. Phil wants to run a surveillance on Sid Wright. Who? Archie Foster's son-in-law. Hasn't Phil run this past you? Yes, he has. Well, I think we should do it. Let's take a quick look up here, especially on nights. What for? Kids doing drugs. Blokes doing blokes. Looks like that kind of spot. Funny I never get any girl on girl action out in the open. Shame. A little problem with gay people or something? I'm ever so sorry, Tony. I didn't realise. That's not what I meant. 
So what's your impressions of this thing? So you're asking 595, can I have an index check please? Juliet 51 Charlie Yankee Echo. Got any kids? No. Oh. 595 from Sierra Oscar, index Juliet 51 Charlie Yankee Echo, Blue BMW, reporting from today. Yeah, received, thanks. Uh, when did you back? Uh, later on. I'm not sure when. We found the car. We think it's been used in a hit and run. What? A man got run over. The description of the car matches your husband's BMW, but forensics will tell us if it's the same car. Are you okay? Sit down here for a minute. Is there something you haven't told us? I wasn't at home last night. I was, um... I was out at work, Stu. It was my leaving party. Why did you tell us you were here? Because Ed told me to. He said it was important, but he didn't say anything about a hit and run. All right. Where's DS Hunter? He went out. OK, have you made any headway where you found the bike? Uh, no one saw anything, Gav. But we can appeal for witnesses and put a yellow board up on the footpath. Well, the reward on this has got to be 10,000 plus, so maybe we should flush out some informants. I'll speak to SO7's source unit. What about local press? What about them? Well, we could whack something out, put the Crime Stoppers number on it. Where have you been? I've been watching Sib Wright. Did I say he was under surveillance? No, but the DCI thought it was worth a look, so I did. I know what the DCI said. I've just been talking to him. And no surveillance has been authorised yet. That was just a preliminary look, Gav. Lucky I did, actually, because he hooked up with Vince Foster. Oh, that'd be Archie Foster's son. Yes, Gav. Don't mind me. Carry on. OK, well, if we're going to do a surveillance on him, then let's fill out the necessary pat forms and um, we'll take it from there. Yes, Gav. Brandon. See, just that little extra bit of effort, you know what I mean? Sir, do you want to see me? My office? I hear you've been under a little bit of surveillance yourself. I know Jack's spoken to you already, but you completely forgot to mention the press. If it was an issue for DCI Meadows, I'm surprised he didn't raise it. Of course it's an issue. And maybe he was waiting for you to raise it. Well, there was only one reporter, sir. One or a hundred. We don't need to be the story. We're not the story. This man, my ex, was in the public eye. The police officer with a love child, I think, is the angle. Are they harassing you? The press, they seem to have backed off at the moment. They don't back off until they get the dirt. I'm not saying there is any dirt, but just don't expect them to go away. It's a private matter, sir. We separated at university. There are no discipline issues. Maybe you need to approach it differently. If this was the job, how would you handle it? Talk it through, change tactics. Exactly. Move on. When you're faced with new circumstances, find a new response. I can do that. Any idea why this has suddenly blown up now? Everything's under control, sir. It really is. How long have you been in the job then, Tony? 27 years. So you're not ambitious then? What? You're not interested in promotion? No? Oh well. I guess not everyone is. Ah, they haven't taken the milk in. Sir Oscar 595, can we confirm name and address on the Misper at Farley Estate? Mr. Dog, 10 Broad Tower, over. Yeah, received, thanks. Mr. Dobbs! Mr. Dobbs! What now? No, hang on, Tom. There's no more, so I'll give it a kick. Cheaper than fixing the glass. I'll breathe through your mouth. <coughs> well, he appears to have died in his chair. What do you think? Any reason to believe it's suspicious? We'll have a proper look around. Looks like the karma soup the babes are too much for him. What now? I'll go to the coroner's lot. They'll sort out an undertaker. I'll have a word with the estate manager, see if we can find out a bit more about him, and then get the door secured. 
What do I do? You stay here. Make sure nothing gets nicked. How long? Until the body's collected and the property's secured. Oh, you want to see if there's any reference to next to Kim while you're at it? Inside the flat? Yeah. That's what you call a griefy job. It's what I call doing the job. We uh, think we might have found the car that ran you over. Do you know someone called Mr. Moorfield? Why? It was his car. I know who he is. How? Through his wife. She does the same Latin dance class that I do. You won't be doing the cha-cha-cha for a while, will you? Moorfield showed up one night and had a go at me for dancing with her. Why? He got it into his head we were too physical. But that's just salsa. He didn't come to the class himself, so what's he expect? She's got to dance with somebody. Did he think you were having an affair? I'm not inside the man's head. Or well, why would he run you over? I never said he did. You said it was his car. You said last night if they came back, you'd sort them out. <laughs> did you think it might be him? It occurred to me. What, just for dancing with his wife? Some men, it don't even take that much. I don't want the hassle of setting up in one of the houses. So we do it from vehicles? Well, how long is it going to be before someone clocks us round here? Not very long, Phil. I never said it was perfect. I said it was our best shot. I don't mind covering this with Brandon or Eva. You don't need to be here, Gov. If you've got other things you need to deal with. What other things? Family matters. Don't get smart, Phil. I'm not. Yes, you were. And while we're on the subject, don't go behind my back and talk to the governor. I didn't. I just said to I him... I know what you said. Because he told me. Yes. Don't want to use your tools, do you, mate? Didn't think you would. I don't know anything about your hit and run. I was at home. This morning I saw the car was gone. I don't have to make things up. I didn't do nothing last night except for drink a few beers and fart. Oh, very nice. Do you know a fella called Greg Townsend? No. You threatened him outside your wife's dance class. Him? So what? He was the man who was knocked down in the hit and run. His leg was broken. Good. We've taken some paint samples from the cars that were here to compare against yours. Look, you wouldn't be the first jealous husband to fly off the handle and go too far. Motive, opportunity and your vehicle. No. You can see how it looks. Yeah. Someone is stupid. Yeah, I can. If you've got something to say, I think you'd better say it. No. I wasn't on my own last night. I was at home, but I wasn't alone. Who were you with? A woman. Is that him? Yep. We'll follow him, that's why we're here. If she really hasn't slept with him since she became pregnant, the fellow deserves some sympathy, doesn't he? Yeah, it's, it's Mr. Moorfield, and the girl's name's Maggie. Okay, thanks. It's Sergeant Murphy, Sunhill. Listen, if he uses an escort service for himself and then complains about her and this fella, that makes him a hypocrite in my book. What's good for the goose and all, huh? You mean the other way around? I mean both ways. Yeah, and it doesn't do any of them any good to get in this mess. Sergeant Murphy. Yes, are you the girl that visited Ed Moorfield at home last night? No, no, you're not in any trouble. I just want to confirm where he was. That's fine. No, that's completely between the two of you. Thank you. She was with him from 9 till 11. Yeah, hi, this is PC Kent, the new probationer. Yeah, would you put me through the CAD, please? Sir. Yeah, this is PC Kent. Did PC Stamp get you to put a call through at the coroner's office about a sudden death? He didn't. No, no, don't bother him. Listen, uh, will you contact the coroner's office about it if I give you the details now? Oh, 
Where's your telephone, love? Right, it's just over there, darling. Cheers. How many cameras? Fifteen inside, then two pointing up Harlow Street, and another two on Island Lane. Any modifications to the system? Well, some, but they're in a maintenance manual, and I can't take that away from work. I'll need the modifications pages. A photocopy will do if you can't take it out. We've had a result. He's talking security systems to someone. What security systems? Where? Well, judging by the names of the streets he was using, it's the Met Warehouse where he works. Well, what are you doing here? I didn't stand you down. No. You said stay till the body was picked up and the place was secure. So why are you here? Well, the undertaker's turned up. I've fixed a lot. Seems silly to be tied up there when there's other things I could be doing. What we do feel is we tell the SO7 source unit and we let them decide. It's our intelligence on our patch. Why should we hand it over to them? Have you ever heard a conversation in the park with two blokes talking about a possible robbery in the future? That doesn't help us with either the security van robbery or the subsequent ambush. Yeah, well, Sid links them all up. You can't say that, not with any certainty. We haven't joined the dots. Well, the dots are there and so is Sid. We can't ignore it, Gav. I'm not ignoring it. I'm just saying, give the information to the source unit and let them deal with it while we stick to what we know. So he asked you to contact the coroner and specifically said not to bother me. That's about it. Thanks. What are you doing? Looking for you. Well, now you found me. Look, we seem to have got off on the wrong foot and I want to apologise. What for? Oh, come on, lighten up, Tony. I said some things and it might have sounded a bit off. You know about your sexuality, your career. I was making conversation, that's all. So what do you say? Apology accepted? If it's genuine. Of course it is. Apology accepted. You alright? Yep. I thought you were in court all day. Yeah, well, the judge threw it out, didn't she? Why? Because she ruled the witness evidence unreliable. And what did the prosecutor say? Well, that's the point of court, Ken, to test the evidence. So, when you were moonlighting, did you apply for a job at a security outfit called Secureway? Yeah, yeah, I applied some more of it. Would you get accepted? The hours were no good. So you're on the books? In theory, you could go and work for them. Well, what do I want to do that for? Well, because the bloke I fancy for these robberies, he works for Secure Ways. I want to push for someone to go undercover. No, 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 stop right there. No. Number one, you owe me. Oh, come on, not, not again. This is not, I, not, I told you I'll pay you back in instalments, all right? I've got child support to contend with, and all that. Yeah, we'll think of the overtime. <sighs> Number two, this is our chance to shine while the DI's sleeping on the job, all right? We do good out of this and we're going to look great. It's a win-win situation for the parents. Win-win. You said four o'clock. Yeah, well, I had other things I had to deal with. OK, why not you can deal with me? She went for me. She went and got run her boyfriend over. He is over. not my boyfriend. He's angry because I wouldn't lie for him because I got him into trouble. You can I? Hey. Yeah. I'm the baby, the baby. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Are you sure? You're under the nets for the salt. You do not have to say anything. But anything you do say may be taken down or given an evidence, okay? Just breathe. Get off. Into the car. You're okay. Now. I want to meet her. I have a daughter I didn't know about, and I want to meet her. You did last night. I mean properly. Sorry, I don't know what that means. I'm not sure you do either. It means access. No way. This isn't a divorce. There's no relationship to maintain. You've had absolutely nothing to do with her. You vanished, Samantha. You said you'd had an abortion and you vanished out of my life. Of course I've had nothing to do with her. I didn't know she existed, but I do now. We had something once, and now we've got a child to prove it. Not we, Glenn. Me. And it's not now. It's been 16 years. That's the point. It is we and it is now, because now I know. So I have to do something about it. You know me well enough to understand that. Well, I'm not sure who I know. 
Glenn Weston or Ian McCarthy. I'm going to see her with your help or without it. And the messier it is, the more the press will lap it up. Are you threatening me with the press? I'm giving you a choice. Accept the inevitable and do it right, or... Or nothing, Samantha. There's no choice. That's the only option. The other way is too ugly, because I will see her. What are you actually proposing? Something really simple. Like a walk in the park, or go and have a meal. You know, just walk and talk. And then what? Then we see where it goes. One meeting. Then we review it. That's all I'm asking for. And I have to be there. Isn't that up to Abigail? No, that's not negotiable. Undercover's the quickest way, Gov. Straight to the source. And Ken's up for it as well, aren't you, Ken? Yeah. yeah he's done it before. He looks the part and he's used to sitting on his backside all day. Have you run this past Samantha? Yeah, she was busy, so we thought we'd come straight to you. We need to act on this as quickly as possible. Uh, this man does security in the Met Warehouse, Gov. And if I was a villain, I couldn't think of anything sweeter than robbing the police. Yeah, um, we think this is going to be the target, but obviously we don't know what the schedule is going to be yet. Have you contacted the security firm? Yeah, we needed the green light first. You know, this might have nothing to do with the original robberies. You realise that, don't you? Yeah, but it's a bird in a handcuff. OK, let's do it. Right, I'll handle all your security checks and do all the liaison with the firm. Ken, you better start constructing an identity for yourself. I'll tell Samantha. You'll tell me what? Ken's going to go undercover on the armed robberies. Undercover where? In the Met Warehouse, in security, alongside Sid Wright. Was this your initiative? Yes, Gav. Good work, Phil. New circumstances, new response. Tonight, Ken Drummond is having trouble. I've done this before. Ken, the art of creating an identity is to keep it as close as possible to the truth. Maybe I should start with forced into it. Yeah, I think you should. Recently separated, two families to support, a gambler, in debt to his old supervisor who has a hold over him that he resents. Now, I think you do resentful pretty well, don't you, Ken? You're enjoying this, aren't you? Absolutely. Now, I just spoke with Secureways. They're keen to get cracking now. They think they might be here again. What does that mean in English? You start tonight. Tonight? Well, that's going to mean a 24-hour straight shift. Stop complaining, will you? <sighs> think of the juicy overtime. It's debt shrinkage. When we talked before, you said Ed Moorfield ran you over. No. You said it was his car. But you thought it was Ed. I said he was capable. Well, he's got an alibi. Why don't you sit down there and make yourself comfortable? You see, we don't think the car was stolen. We think that was a cover story for the hit and run. You see, he's got an alibi and she's got an alibi. Which means that one of them is lying. I was hoping you were going to tell me which one. Can't help you. Don't you want to find out who did this to you? I thought that was your job. I'm not getting anywhere here, am I? You see, Mr. Moorfield's alibi is a solid one. I never said it was him. Which leaves here. What did you do? Swap partners in the dance class. She stopped going. Got too big in the belly. You wouldn't happen to be the father of that baby she's carrying, would you? I mean, that would explain a lot, wouldn't it? Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. I don't know what you're talking about. You don't seem to know anything about anything, do you? It's been worse since I've been pregnant. In what way? Jealous and possessive. I know it sounds mad, but I reckon he's jealous of the baby. It was a baby, yeah, yeah, definitely. Word, please, Sarge. Excuse me a minute. I've just been told to Greg Townsend. 
I think Lisa ran him over. Why? Because I think he's the father of her baby and he doesn't want to know. Did he accuse her? No. So what do you want to do? Ask her. PC Tabner, there's something he wants to ask you. <clears throat> Did you run Greg Townsend over? Why would I do that? That's why I'm asking you. If that's what he said to you, then he's, he's lying. Well, that seems to be the pattern with you three. But I'm asking you now. Why would I do something like that for no reason? Maybe you have got a reason. <sighs> no. No, no, I don't believe you. You wouldn't mention the baby. I do know that much about him. Is the baby relevant, Lisa? Not to you, it isn't. My husband has hit me and I've come here to make a statement about that. I don't have to talk about anything else. Did you run Greg Townsend over? I don't have to stay here and listen to this. A simple yes or no will suffice. Not being able to prosecute, that's what really gets to me. It gets under my skin, especially when you know they've done it. What people will do for a bit on the side? You know, one of the first shouts I went on was this kebab shop owner. And he dropped his own till, and I knew he dropped his own till, and he knew that I knew he dropped his own till. Yet when I looked him in the eye, he still lied to me. It's always stayed with me, now. It's frustrating. Hello? I can't talk now, love. We well, want to sleep there. Is that okay with his parents? All right, but don't stay up all night. Night, love. My youngest. His dad and sister are away. And now his mother's obviously too dull to contemplate. Hmm. This is a secure door, so use your card. Oh. Well, go on, you do it. Oh, okay. Des, don't! What do you want to go home for? There's no one there. What size chest are you? 46. Uh, and what size waist? 36. Uh, I'll sort out a uniform for you. This is the main monitoring room. Mm -hmm. Right, there's a new man. He's going to be working with Sid. Ken. Hi, Mike. Right, okay, follow me. Now, uh, through here. Drinks machine at the end of the corridor. Mm -hmm. Toilets at the end of this one. Right. This is the locker room. Sid. Ken. All right. Ken, right. Sid. Uh, Ken's going to be uh, covering for Dave. Well, what's Dave doing? Oh, he's uh, he's standing in for those guys who got robbed last week. They've gone off sick. Uh, if you can just show him around a bit, you know, show him what's what. Right, uh, that's that. So, uh, what do I use for a locker? Anyone you like. But you need your own padlock. Oh, great. What do I do for now, then? Uh, no one nicks anything here. Well, I haven't seen you before. How long have you worked for Secure? Well, I've uh, been on their books for about three months now, but uh, this is the first job they've come up with. Yeah. You've done it before? Mm-hmm. Who for? Who else you work for? <sighs> Look, no offence, mate, but we'll get on an awful lot better if you don't ask me a lot of silly questions, OK? Yeah. Fine by me. Come to the pub for a drink. Oh, no, thanks. It's a rare treat to have the house empty, so I've got a hot date with a nice bath and the telly. Okay. Did you meet the new probationer? Oh, I did. What do you think? Well, he's a bloke's bloke. You get on very well with Dez. That's where the set of gravity is, if you know what I mean. See you tomorrow. Night.
What? I feel like I'm making a right fool out of myself here. But I meant what I said, didn't I? I know you did. Well, come home with me then. I can't. Yes, you can. I'm married. I've teenage children. Yeah, and you look after them. You bring them up well. You've got a good husband. And you hold your job down. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. Except you want more. Look, I'm too old for this fluttering hearts and fumbling hands stuff. You want more. I can see you do. Why me? Why are you doing this? When you get in the car. Just for a minute. Hmm? I know this may sound stupid, but right now, I can't stand the thought of being without you. The one that got away. You give me something. I want something different. What? I don't know. But it's something I've never had before. You just do. So you coming over? Next time on the bill. I'm not having my money, not like this. Well, let's see you try and stop me. I won't let them intimidate me out of my job. It's a question of whether you can do your job. You just dug your own grave. I want to take it on with me again. Stop it, Des. It's a sin. It's adultery. 